Hello everyone, I'm so excited to share with you some of my favorite recipes. I love using clean ingredients and I love using food to nourish our bodies in a healthy, balanced way. So if you use any of these recipes, I would love to see it on Instagram. Take a picture and tag me at MayaLeeX3. What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to share with you some healthy food and healthy snacks that I eat quite often. These are the recipes that are my go-tos and what I look for when I'm cooking is to make sure that that not only is it nutritious, but it tastes good, and there's leftovers. All of these recipes ended up being gluten-free, but I am not gluten-free. I just found that my body feels its best when I am eating gluten minimally. So life is all about balance, but these foods are going to help you make sure you have balanced meals. Okay, let's go. In case you are wondering, I am house-sitting. This is not my house, but it's a really nice house. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is definitely one of my favorite recipes because it requires very little ingredients and you can make a lot of it and then freeze it. So I bought four Atlantic salmons from Whole Foods, but you can really get it anywhere. And I'm going to season it with some pink salt, but you can use any salt. Then I get some broccoli florets and I'm going to put it next to all of the salmon because it's all going to bake in one pan. Then I add some coconut aminos, which is basically a soy sauce replacement, but it's a little sweeter so I don't need to add sugar. So we sprinkle that all over the broccoli and the salmon, and then I drizzle on some olive oil as well, just to help it bake really well. You can use avocado oil too. I already preheated the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It really depends on everyone's oven, but I find that 400 degrees is pretty good. And I'm gonna put it in there for about 20 minutes. I am a huge multitasker, so while my food is baking, I am going to make some quinoa. So I am the type of person who will shop for groceries and then if I can reuse any of the ingredients in a different way, I will. So I just follow the instructions on the back of the bag and then I have about 15 minutes for everything to cook. Once the timer rings, I fluff up the quinoa and then I take the food out of the oven. I love these types of dinners because it requires very minimal amounts of kitchenware and it means there's less dishes. Then I plate everything together. I like to add some greens, so I'm adding baby kale. You can honestly add lettuce, spinach, whatever you want. Then I drizzle on some extra coconut aminos and I am done. Next is a great healthy snack. I'm getting rice cakes, some berries, and some almond butter. You can honestly use toast if you want to. I just have so many rice cakes, I need to find all the different ways to use it. Then I take about a cup of berries, I wash them, and then I sliced up my strawberries. I'm going to eat one right now. I love fruits and I love to keep any leftovers in Tupperware so I can eat it as a snack by itself. Then I layer on the rice cake some almond butter, I place the berries in a neat fashion, and then I'll also sprinkle on some hemp seeds, which is optional, and I'm done. If you've seen my videos before, then hi, it's smoothie time. And if you're new here, then well, I love smoothies. So I wanna share one of my favorites with you. I add about a cup of oat milk and then a scoop and a half of vanilla protein. Then I add some ice and some frozen berries. Then we add a scoop of almond butter, which is seriously a game changer. And then we blend it all up. Typically when you add frozen fruit, you don't need to add ice, but lately this summer I've been craving really cold icy drinks, so that's why I'm adding it. I love starting my mornings with a nutrient dense shake because then my body is able to digest it really well and I know I'm getting all of my vitamins, minerals, and protein first thing in the morning. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're looking to learn more about healthy eating or health and wellness, you can explore Skillshare's workshops, classes, and a bunch of other things. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Skillshare offers creative classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it.
One class I'm learning from is Ilana Karp's knife skills, a mini class to chop like a chef because I cut food like I'm in middle school home ec. <laughs> so I really could use this class, especially when I'm chopping all of my vegetables. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in my description will get two free months of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So next is a recipe I saw Megan Batoon make. She is a YouTuber and a dancer. And after seeing her video, I thought I need to try to make it. So you need to chop up some tomatoes. I'm using Roma tomatoes. And then I'm going to chop up some celery. Look at me using the knife skills I've learned. Just kidding, I definitely need a lot more practice. Next, we need to boil a pot of water for the pasta. I probably should have done that first. So while I wait for the water to boil, I like to multitask, so I am doing my laundry real quick. So the pasta I am using is bonza pasta. I use it quite often in my videos, but you definitely can use any type of pasta you want. Whenever I buy food, I make sure it's going to provide a lot of nutrients for my body, so this one has a lot of protein and fiber. The mayo I always use, if I'm using mayo, is Primal Kitchen because all of their ingredients are really clean. Then I am using a can of Wild Planet Albacore Tuna. Once my pasta is done, I drain everything and it is ready to go into a giant bowl. Then I add in the Roma tomatoes, the celery, the tuna, and then some mayo, and we're going to mix it all together to make this pasta salad. You can also season it with a little extra salt and pepper, and then put the rest in Tupperware because for sure you're going to have leftovers. So this recipe definitely made enough to feed an entire family, and here I am. Enough to last me the entire week. So this next snack is super simple, but I have no idea who thought of this name. So you get this bee sauce and it tastes delicious with pretty much any appetizer. So I get some gluten-free crackers that are also low sodium and they taste really good. And then some carrots and then some of the bee sauce. We put it on a plate and it tastes so good together. We need to make some hard boiled eggs, so I'm going to start off with four eggs, put it in a pot, and then cover it with cold water. Then we are going to put the heat on high, cover the pot, and let it boil. I'll leave the instructions right over here. Hello rice cakes, we meet again. So because I avoid dairy as much as possible, I love finding cheese alternatives and Kite Hills cream cheese, oh my goodness, it tastes delicious and it's made from almonds. Then we need an avocado and then a hard boiled egg that I already peeled. So grab as many rice cakes as you want. Today I'm going to have two. Then we are going to spread the fake cream cheese all over the cracker. This flavor is delicious and I am just so happy to be alive during a time where all of these food alternatives taste delicious. Then I sliced open my avocado. Honestly, it makes me so nervous whenever I buy avocados because I wanna make sure that they're not too ripe and that they're not too hard. Then I slice my hard boiled egg in half and oh yes, it is a beautiful yellow color. You wanna make sure that your eggs don't have that blue ring around it because that means it was overcooked. So this next step is optional. I have the everything but the bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's and I sprinkle it right on top, but you definitely don't have to do that. This is basically another rendition of avocado toast and it is delicious and a great breakfast meal or a snack. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye.